Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we're looking at how to use global modifiers on the D&D 5th edition character sheet for Roll20. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. We've all been there, you're deep in a combat with the big bad, the fight's been going on for a while, you're taking a swing, you're missing, you just can't get it going, and then you realize, shoot, I forgot to add the plus D4 from the bless spell that the cleric has going. And then you realize you've been forgetting to add that D4 for the last several rounds. Well, the global modifiers in Roll20 will automatically handle things like blessed spells, extra damage, extra bonuses to your skill checks, so that you don't need to remember to include those when you're making your die rolls. So, let's see how they work. So if you've ever played a Barbarian or a Rogue, you've noticed this Global Damage Modifier option right here on your character sheet. And by ticking the box next to, in this case, the Rage Damage, what that means is when our Barbarian makes an attack, the Rage is automatically included in the damage output. So now we don't need to remember to add the Rage bonus in afterwards. And the same thing holds true for rogues, the sneak attack works the same way, it's a global damage modifier. But if I come to my other character sheet that I have open here, this cleric, you'll notice that the cleric does not have a global damage modifier box on their character sheet. And this cleric is an ASMR who has the Radiant Soul ability, which gives them a damage bonus equal to their level for one minute per day. And it would be nice if we could have the global damage modifier there so that we could tick that on when they activated Radiant Soul and be dealing that extra damage. Well, luckily you can. So let's see how to do that. I'm going to scroll up in the character sheet until I get to the cog. And I'm going to click the Show Global Damage Modifier field. And now when we go back to the Core tab, we can see that just like on the Barbarian sheet, we now have a Global Damage Modifier section. And so I'm going to call this Radiant Soul, and the damage is going to be equal to my level. So that's at Curly Brace level, closing Curly Brace, and the type will be Radiant. And now we'll close this by clicking the little gear right here. And the box is now ticked, so let's make a swing with our mace. And there we go, we make a swing with our mace. There's the three damage from our level, because this cleric is level three, and it is listed as radiant damage. Now you can have multiple global damage modifiers set up and active at the same time. But if you do, they're gonna be consolidated into a single roll. Let me show you what that looks like. So let's say that our cleric has taken a dip into rogue, and so we're gonna add a sneak attack bonus here to the global damage modifier. We're just gonna click on the little plus icon here, and sneak attack is actually the example that's listed here, so we're just gonna go ahead and, and use that. Uh, it'll be sneak attack, we'll say yeah, it's gonna be 1d6, and the type will be sneak, and the critical damage will be 1d6 as well. And so let's close up the cog here. All right, and we'll tick the box. So now both Radiant Soul and Sneak Attack are active. If we make a swing with a mace, we can see here that it shows up as Radiant slash Sneak. And if we hover over it, we can see that we rolled uh, one on the Sneak Attack. That's the number in red. And we have the three coming from Radiant Soul. And the hover has it broken down about what amount of damage is coming from what source. So if you need to know that maybe something is vulnerable to radiant damage, you've got that damage amount listed out. And the system is smart enough to handle critical hits correctly. So here you can see I rolled a crit with this 24. And right here we've got a 5 for radiant and sneak. And that is coming from 3 radiant. And I rolled a 2 on the sneak attack die. But then on the other sneak attack die from the crit, I rolled a 5. So the radiant damage is not being doubled, but the sneak attack damage is being rolled twice, which is expected on a critical hit. Now that's great for damage output, but what about like the bless spell that I mentioned earlier, where you've got bonuses to your attack rolls? Can we do that too? Yes, we can. Let me show you how. To set up a global attack modifier, we're going to go back to the cog, and we're going to tick the Show Global Attack Modifier field. And then when we go back to Core, if we scroll down, right near the Attacks and Spellcasting section again, we've got this Global Attack Modifier. And Bless is the example that's included by default here. So that's just there for us. If we close the cog and I make an attack roll with the mace, 
we can see now that we are automatically including the D4 for bless. And just like before, if I want to add a different one, I can do that. I could just come in here and type in the name and the value that I wanted to include, and then that would allow me to have another global attack modifier for maybe a different circumstance. Now, if you ever need to remove one of these modifiers, you'll notice right now I have a blank row here. Click on this lock icon, and then there's a little red trash icon that'll show up. You can just click that, and that will delete whatever one you want. Notice, though, there is no confirmation box saying, do you really want to do this? So make sure that you are clicking the correct one before you actually do it. And then when you're finished, click the lock again to close it all up. Now, of course, Bless does more than just modify your attack rolls. It also modifies your saving throws. Is there a way for us to do that? You bet there is. Scroll back up to the cog. And this time we're going to tick the global save modifier field. And when we go back to core, underneath the saving throws, you'll notice that there is a global save modifier already built. And Bless is already there by default. So let's just close that up right now. And when I make a saving throw, we can see that... Bless is included. Now there are a handful of other global modifiers available, and just for expediency's sake, I'm gonna go turn them all on and talk through them real fast. All right, so let's click on the cog one more time, and I'm gonna turn on the global skill modifier field and the global AC modifier field. Let's go back to core here. So the global skill modifier field is down here underneath your passive perception. And the example they give by default is Guidance. So if you have somebody who has a Guidance spell active, you can make your roll, and you can see that we have the Guidance spell listed there. This one I think is a little more useful if you've got a homebrew item that gives bonuses to skill checks. Maybe if you were doing like a higher level game and as the DM you've given out a skill boon to one of your players and maybe it's just a, a static two bonus here we can turn that on and make a medicine check and we can see now that we have our dm skill boon being applied to that the global ac modifier shows up underneath the attack and spell casting section and again this is handy if maybe your player has picked up an item that modifies their ac that isn't in the compendium maybe it's a homebrew item or something like that maybe it buffs their ac by a value of two you can enter that put it in here, we'll call this my AC buff, close that, and now our character's AC has gone up to 17. If I uncheck that, it's back down to 15. So there you have it. That's how you can use the global modifiers in Roll20. I just want to give a quick shout out of thanks to all my patrons. I really appreciate all of your support. Thank you so much. It really does mean a lot to me. And thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, have a great day.